haters back off. This is the most amazing neoprene ooh doo doo What is up guys? Welcome back. This vlog is, well, it's answering a question you've all been asking me. Sarah, what is up with the neoprene? Why the F are you wearing that? Is it a fad, a gimmick? Explain yourself. But that's not all. Yeah, bring on the confetti and flowers and things and sprinkles. Because I'm gonna share with you my food prophylaxis yeah, basically, you know those times when you don't have time to buy groceries or do food prep? What do you do so that you don't eat crap or order in crap? You know when you travel and you get home and there's absolutely no healthy food in your house and so you have to eat crap? Yeah, well I'm gonna give you my best practices for nipping that in the bud. Thirsty. I make my BCAAs into a slushie. I use crushed ice and this is the pineapple flavor from BSN. Tropical. I bake in advance a whole bunch of chicken breasts and then I throw them in the freezer. This is my stash in my freezer. Frozen bananas for protein shakes. Mm. Cooked frozen green beans. Cooked frozen corn. Cooked chicken breasts. That way I can just take things out of the freezer and defrost them in a pinch and have a meal. When I'm traveling, I like to pack a stash of protein bars. It's great for when you're on an airplane, stuck in airports, or just on the go. I love Rice Krispie Squares, so I'm a huge fan of the BSN Crisp Bars. I really like the salted toffee pretzel and the peanut butter crunch. Ooh, and the new caramel chocolate crunch bars, so good. I use them to make my caramel chocolate cheesecake balls. You can click the card for my recipe. As always, I will post the links for everything you see in this video in the description box below. And I wanted to thank you for using my links. I really appreciate that. Who ripped the tail off of the mouse? It's a minx mouse. I've been using the German chocolate cat in everything. I just made these, oh, crisis averted. I made these last night. Click the card for the recipe. Um, I didn't put that there for you guys. A lot of you have asked me why I'm wearing neoprene during my training. Well, I have three reasons why. One. It's Julian's idea. I'm part of his Strong Fit Mentorship Program. Two, he believes it's possible that spot reduction can happen. Three, he believes that this is a way to get muscles that are stuck in freeze state to start firing. So this means learning about the brain Milano Corton Vegas access. And you're like, oh, unsubscribe. The Milano Corton access is a brain circuit and it is involved in energy balance. So are you gonna gain fat or are you gonna lose fat? Increase brain melanocortin signaling or negative energy balance, such as with fasting, will promote lipid mobilization, fat burning, by increasing sympathetic nervous system activity to adipose tissue. I already know what your next question is. Sarah, what if you decrease brain melanocortin signaling? Does that promote fat gain? And yes, it does via the vagus nerve. Vagal signals will only contribute to fat gain if there is no stimulus of the sympathetic nervous system through the melanocortin vagal axis. So what does this mean? It means your nervous system is gonna decide whether you lose or gain fat. It goes back to one sentence that Julian has always repeatedly said. It's not what you do, but how you do it. So if you think you're doing everything right to lose fat, but you're not losing fat, now you know why. You're actually not doing things right. So if you're doing yoga and you're doing incline walking on the treadmill for 60 minutes a day and you're not losing fat, well, it's because there is no fight mode in your training. So instead of eating less calories, work out harder. So if you're doing these 30 minute high intensity workouts, but you're pacing the entire time, you're enduring your workout, well, you're gonna end up storing fat because you're stimulating the vagus nerve, you're not introducing enough intensity into your workout. Oh Sarah, does this mean if I do SNS style training every day, I can be a skinny bitch? If you do that daily, you're going to start pacing, you're not gonna wanna be there, which puts you in flight mode, which is not fight mode, which means you're gonna promote fat gain. I think you should still consider doing intermittent fasting, time-restricted eating, because we've already established that when you're in negative energy balance, fasted state, that's gonna stimulate sympathetic nervous system activity, which is going to promote fat burning. 
So what's up with the neoprene? Did you know that you can get access to the melanocort and vagal axis through the skin? Hence, wearing the neoprene, all the crazy layers of it. So 80% of the weight of the sympathetic nervous system is in your skin. So the whole idea behind the neoprene is that we want to create compression, like this constant irritation, tightness on the skin, kind of like with occlusion training. So if you slap on the neoprene, and you do some lame sauce workout on the treadmill where you're doing incline walking for 60 minutes. Sure, you might lose some water weight, but that effect is ephemeral, it's not fat loss. You're not gonna burn fat if you are pacing and just being lame during the training. So you have to introduce fight into what you are doing. And the whole concept that Julian's created here is finding intensity in the flow state flow under pressure. So you're flirting with the fight. So we do this by using nasal breathing during an exercise that puts you in fight. This burns fat. Nasal breathing is hard. I was really freaking out a lot at first, but now I'm getting a lot better and it has significantly improved my athletic performance. So I did flow under pressure workouts wearing the neoprene to get ready for my bodybuilding.com shoot and quite frankly, I think it made me look pretty shredded. I was pleased with it. Plus it encouraged me to go harder in my workouts instead of being a pacer. So if you're not willing to do that, then I wouldn't waste your time or money. Neoprene capris, vest, thigh bands, arm bands, corset, two to three millimeters thick. Put the neoprene on tight and do heavy sandbag front squats. Do it until your weak muscles blow up. It will reveal your weaknesses. It creates a tightness and occlusion and this will create heat. We're looking for compression onto the skin. This will give you a strong connection to whatever muscle is in freeze. It will help you take a muscle that's stuck in freeze state and bring it into the fight state. And this causes it to create a lot of heat because it is burning fat to produce energy so that it can keep fighting. Remember the phylogenetic hierarchy? So the whole idea is to take muscles that are in the freeze state, out of the freeze state, wake them up, and get them into the SNS fight state. I thought the neoprene was good feedback because I did get the glutes turning on in the bottom position of the squat and that saved my back and it made me stronger. Stand big front squats. It forces you to engage your external obliques. Whoa, let me get my monocle. My strong fit homework is to do the Ed Cohn cycle wearing neoprene and to select one a lift. So I've selected the barbell back squat because I'd really like to learn how to do this without pain. I wanna be methodical, I wanna keep my ego out of it, and I wanna make sure that I'm actually feeling the correct muscles and staying free of pain and that I'm training function. We're gonna do nose breathing. It's okay to exhale the mouth. I could really feel both gluteal max burning like crazy in the neoprene, especially on the way back up, especially on the right glute max. And there was more sweat pooling in the butt cheek on the right side and way more sweat dripping down the right leg, which confirms that my right glute max is weaker than the left side. So I agree with everything Julian is saying. Week one, I'm starting modest, and I was comfortably able to do 115 pounds, two sets for eight reps. And obviously with each passing week, the weight will increase, but I will always listen to how my body feels. Why would I train dysfunction? Maybe I would have done that in my 20s and 30s, but there's only so many times you can get burned before you start to learn your lesson. Remember, the purpose of the neoprene is to help you take muscles that are trapped in a freeze state into the fight state. So this is relevant for me because there's certain muscles in my body that are deficient that just aren't joining my party and it's causing imbalances and problems and it's holding me back. So I want to be a balanced bunny beast. So that's why I'm very interested in wearing the neoprene during my strength training and bodybuilding sessions so that I can learn how to take these frozen muscles and get them invited to the party and get them into fight. And guess what? When you're in fight, you burn fat. We just established that. So.
conditioning workouts are not the right place to be learning how to take a muscle and freeze into fight. Doing that is already incredibly taxing, but to do it in a conditioning workout, Julian says it's just way too much and it will smoke you and then you'll start pacing anyway, which means you're not gonna be in SNS, which means you're going to be storing fat, not burning fat. A lot of you will wanna wear the neoprene and do your cardio conditioning workouts because you've been trained to think that that's how you lose fat. But that's not the case because you're gonna be pacing, which means you're not gonna be in SNS mode, which means you're not gonna be burning fat. Yes, you will lose water weight, but that's ephemeral as soon as you have a drink of water again. You might as well just go into a sauna if you want to temporarily lose a pound and then regain it 20 minutes later when you rehydrate. Thank you for watching this vlog all the way to the end. I appreciate your time and attention, and I really appreciate the questions you ask me. It helps me figure out what to address in each vlog. Oh, thanks for subscribing, liking, commenting, all that good stuff. And until next time, bye.